Hello, I'm Spiro with SP Wood Art, and thank you very much for joining me. This is my first video of 2016, and I'm going to make a small desk clock. Uh, sort of a gyro style, but I guess it's really not a gyro, but it looks like one. <laughs> so I hope you stick with me to the end and enjoy the show. Thank you very much. I'm going to make most of the clock out of a piece of maple burl. I really like this wood, it's beautiful and wonderful grain. And here's my f clock. It's small, it's about an inch and three eighths in diameter. So I made a few rings here. You probably can't see it too well on the video. The centers for the clock and then there's going to be some of the burl on the center ring, a space and then the outer ring that eventually will hold the center clock piece with uh, two pegs or a post and then it'll come down into a pedestal. There's no particular method to the size. It's basically up to you and your design. Uh, the center ring uh, factors in the lip, and then I measured from the lip out for my rings. And I'm going to make the outer ring and the inside ring uh, out of this one piece. It's not going to be a very big clock, it's small because the clock itself is pretty small. Um, so I'll have to bring this either over to the table saw or by hand or however I want to do this, so the chop saw and just cut this out. And salvage as much as this I can, as I can for later. Cut that side off first. And that way when I turn this, I'll have a better area to clamp. So there is probably 101 different ways to mount your wood. I'm just going to mount it between centers for right now and I'm going to put a tenon on this side and then put it in my four jaw scroll chuck. Also I could have cut the corners off to make this a little easier but there really is not much to cut off. So I'm just going to... Uh, take these corners off on the lid. I'm going to start off by using my square carbide cutter to rough out the blank. And once again, I noticed that I forgot to take my wedding band off. Just a safety tip. And since this piece is a little bit on the punky side, I'm taking lighter roughing cuts. So it's taking me a little bit longer to rough the blank out. I also made a dovetail tenon on the left side, as you can see, for my four jaw scroll chuck. And the line is for the pedestal base. Next I'm going to define my measurement lines with my 1 8 inch parting tool. And because these parting tool cuts are going to eventually be very deep, I'm going to do some relief cuts as well. Now I can clean up the face of my blank and will not lose my measurement lines because they're cut pretty deep. And I'm using my square carbide cutter to make sure that the surface is really flat. Then I'm going to take some really light shearing cuts to try and smooth out the outside and the face of the blank as best I can to minimize sanding. Next, I will carve out the center hole for the clock face. 
And this is a crucial step. The width and the depth needs to be pretty accurate. Well, maybe not the depth as much, but the width has to be uh, just right so the clock insert fits in the hole snug so it doesn't fall out. So this is an important step and the width and depth will vary depending on the size or type of clock insert that you have. So I'll do this process a couple of times of carving a little bit out and then checking the clock to make sure it fits until it fits just right. You can also use a Fosner bit, but I like to do more turning. At this point, I'm going to remove the blank and bring it over to the drill press and drill the hole all the way through the blank for the post. And the post is aligned with the center of the blank. And you probably could have drilled this hole while the blank was square. Now I want to dis determine how wide I want the clock ring and the outer ring and then drill the hole um, in the center. So for simplicity, I just made it an inch wide to give it more stability because this outer ring is going to be pretty thin and it'll get more stable when I put the post through it. And I marked the center at a half inch. I also aligned my drill bit with the center of my circle. So here we go and I'm just going to take some relief cuts. And when I get close to the end I will go slower in an attempt to prevent tear out. Unfortunately there was a little tear out but it was acceptable and some sanding will probably remove most of that although the ring will get thinner. I decided to drill the hole at this point because this depth of the rings is not all the way through yet and it'll give a lot more stability uh, and less likely for breakage when you drill the hole. Um, unless you drill the hole when it's square before you even put it on the lathe, which uh, next time I probably would have just done that. I'm just going to measure in one inch. Next I marked a depth line with my pencil on the parting tool. And I'm trying to be precise with the depth because the leftover wood will serve as part of the pedestal base. Now on to doing as much of the sanding and finishing as I possibly can on the lathe. I started with a 150 grit and went up to 600. And for the finish I chose to use a friction polish, about three coats. And after applying each coat of the friction polish, I will burnish and heat up the friction polish to dry it with a clean paper towel. Now I will part off the first outer ring. Next I'm going to move over to my drill press and use a drum sander to sand the inside of the outer ring. And I have this Delta drum sanding kit which I bought with my drill press and it's worked really well for me over the years and I haven't had a need to purchase a spindle sander although it would be nice someday. And if you're wondering, this is a 120 grit. And then I will move over and sand the rest of the grits up to 600 by hand. And if you did use a drum sander like I did and not a spindle sander, then you want to make sure that you remove any of the drum sanding lines on the inside. Or else you'll really be able to see it later, especially when you add the friction polish. Which is my next step. I'm just going to hand apply the friction polish and then let it dry. Now I will start to part off the second ring that holds the face of the clock and before I finish completely parting it off I will apply the three coats of friction polish. Then move on to completely parting the second ring off. Then I will just bring this over to my uh, belt sander and remove that little nub. 
and also hand sanding up to 600 grit adding the friction polish the three coats and letting it dry now I can move on to completing the pedestal for the small desk clock and this is actually the base and I'm going to use my square card by cutter to flatten the top and checking to make sure that it is completely flat then I will move on to my round carbide cutter and shape the outside profile of the clock base I've decided to go with something simple nothing too fancy in hopes to stay true to an old world style which is also why I chose to use a shellac based finish to stay true to an older style and after I'm done sanding up to 600 grit, I will apply the friction polish, three coats. Next, I just moved it out of the chuck a little bit to expose the tenon, and then I'm going to just part it from the lathe with the lathe off. And after I use my belt sander to remove the rest of the tenon, I'll hand sand up to 600 grit and leave the bottom bare. So what you're seeing here, I'm cutting the pedestal post out of a piece of the scrap burl that was left over. And I want it to have kind of a natural edge uh, look to it. So I'm sizing it to the right height and the right width. And I kind of want like one or two of the sides to have a slight angle. I don't want it to be perfectly square. So in total, I've made about three cuts. Next, I will take this post and shape it up a little bit on the belt sander and then finish hand sanding it up to 600 grit. And I'm being extremely careful not to sand too hard to snap it in half. Next, to ensure that all of the crevices and the natural edge inside and the voids are completely covered in the friction polish. I pretty much drenched this in friction polish and it was quite fun. I enjoyed it. <laughs> and then I'll just wipe off the excess and let this dry for about a day. <laughs> Next, you'll just want to determine where you want the ring to sit. And then I'm going to trace the outer curve on the top of the pedestal in the location that I chose to have a curve to match the outer ring so it has a nice uh, joint line. And then I'll bring it over to the drill press and sand that out with the drum sander, a smaller drum sander than I was using before. Then I will hand sand the top of the piece a little bit, uh, but I'm not going to make it too smooth. I'm going to stop at uh, 220 grit so it adheres to the glue better. And I have to say I'm quite happy with how tight the joint came out. Then to finish that up, I'll just add a quick couple of coats of the friction polish and let that dry. Next, I'm going to make the post that will situate the clock face ring to the outer ring. And this is a maple wood dowel and I purchased it. I have a bunch of these in the shop. I didn't make it. And I'm just going to measure the length of approximately how long I would want the post. And I'm not going to have the post directly right up against the ring. I want it to stick out a bit on either side. Also, the diameter is a little bit bigger than the hole that I have drilled for the post, so I need to uh, just sand it down a little bit so they fit in the hole. Also for safety, if you are going to use a Jacob's chuck, make sure you have a draw bar so your Jacob's chuck is uh, firmly seated in your lathe and won't come out. And then I'll just check to make sure that the ring fits on there snug. And the other ring should fit just as well. Now I'm going to use this Super Ball Black India Ink, Super Black India Ink. I'm not sure if there's a difference. And 
we're going to put a few coats on the dowel to let it really soak in. And after the ink is completely dry, I'll put three coats of the friction polish over the dowel. And a little bit of the black will probably come off on your first coat, but not enough to make any kind of a difference in the color. Now I'm going to make two end caps for the post. And I'm going to take this maple burl uh, piece that was left over and I'm going to drill two shallow holes on each side and once the holes are drilled I will cut the piece in half and the holes are just so they slip over the end of the post then I will true up this small little end cap piece and shape the profile using my parting tool and a square radius cutter and then two different uh, micro tools. One's a, a round nose scraper and the other is kind of a thin parting tool. I decided to have the diameter at a half inch, so I'm just checking that using a half inch wrench. This will make it easier when I make the second end cap. Then all I need to do is just part off the left side, which is just some scrap wood. Then do a hand sand to remove the nub and I'll sand up to 600 grit and then I'll apply the friction polish. Then you'll just need to repeat this entire process to make a second end cap. Here I'm going to glue on one end cap with some medium viscosity CA glue or cyanoacrylate glue or super glue. And I'll let that dry for about five minutes. And just to note, don't add too much glue so it squeezes out. If you do, I would wipe it off really quickly because you don't want that to show up on the black. And I don't have a clip of this, but if you're wondering how I glued the center ring on, I changed out the tip on my glue bottle to a thin needle point tip, and that was able to get into the holes on the ring and apply the glue without getting any on the black. You could also just cut the dowel in half and glue it in that way. So here I measured one side of the protruding post and then I'm just going to try and match it on this side and then just cut the excess dowel off. Then I'll glue the second end cap on the post. And here I will glue the pedestal post onto the ring. And this is where you need to kind of just judge where you want the ring to sit. And since the ring is wider than the pedestal base, I centered it in the middle of the ring. And to speed up the dry time so I don't have to sit here and hold it, I used a couple of sprays of uh, the CA Accelerator. And this brand of accelerator is Hot Stuff, the same brand as the CA glue that I use. And I really like this stuff, it sets up quickly. And for the final glue step, I will glue the pedestal post to the pedestal base. And I'll just eyeball uh, the center. And I'll reiterate that you don't want too much glue on this so it seeps out the joint. You could definitely use a different type of glue, but I've never had an issue with this glue holding. Well, I'd like to thank those of you who are still with me. It's kind of a long video, so I probably lost a few people on the way. But I am really happy with how this project came out. Um, I think it's a really neat desk clock, and I'm extremely happy with the design and I think it matches the uh, style of the clock really well. For those of you who are interested, it is a little over six inches tall and the fit is really nice. It stays put no matter where you put it. Well, it did take me a few days to do this project, although you can't tell from the video. Um, only because of dry times for the shellac or friction polish. It takes some um, time. <laughs> Again, thank you. And if you haven't subscribed, feel free to do so. Take care.